Hello and welcome to today's Think Tank Accelerate program, Key Trends for 2014. Today's presenter is Keith Ecker, Vice President of Jaffe PR, and his presentation is entitled, The Content is the Message, How Sharing Content and Engaging Directly with Prospects Will Be Essential to Marketers. The Accelerate program is a series of about eight short webinar-style presentations, each addressing a key trend we believe is coming in 2014. The various topics are listed on this slide. The last presentation is actually going to take the form of a live discussion at the LMA Los Angeles chapter in early January on the topic of change management. After each webinar is recorded, a recording is available on the Legal Marketing site at legalmarketing.org slash think tank. As I said before, today's presentation is given, given by Keith Ecker, Vice President of Jaffe PR, on the topic, The Content is the Message. Keith says that the audiences law firms are trying to reach with marketing are changing dramatically. They digest information in far more interactive ways. To keep up with this shift in 2014, law firms must not just deliver copy, they must share content with clients and establish an engaging conversation with clients and prospects. Keith is going to describe why content will be increasingly vital, how law firms can create more high-quality content, and how to engage clients in that dialogue. If you use social media to comment on today's presentation, please use the hashtags Accelerate and Content. And over to you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. So first, I just want to talk about content generally and making a case for it. Uh, we've all heard the buzzword content marketing. It is probably the most used buzzword for legal marketers and marketing as a whole uh, for the past year, and will probably continue to be so. So why is content important? Well, it's one of the foundational elements of community along with engagement. And in this day and age, uh, community is really the goal of a lot of marketing around brands. You want to turn your brand into a community in the sense of uh, uh, digital media. So we already operate a lot in digital communities, social media, for example, such as Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, but we also have communities interact with our other digital assets, such as our website and our e-newsletters. And the more we can foster that community, the more we can build awareness around our brand, the more communication we can generate, the more trust we can generate among, amongst our audience, and then thus the more new business we can create. So as you can see, content plus engagement is really a way to push people through the sales cycle. Another reason why content is incredibly important to the legal marketplace is that, well, everybody is doing it. According to the Content Marketing Institute, the use of content marketing has increased amongst B2Bs over the past few years. It was already well adopted uh, in 2010 as 90% of B2B marketers said that they were using content marketing, but it has uh, trended upward a uh, few percentage points in, uh, up to 2013 at 93%. Uh, even more telling, perhaps, is the change in amount of B2B content creation over the last 12 months, with 73% of B2B content marketers saying that they are creating more content, with nearly a third saying significantly more. We can also look at this from a spending perspective. Uh, we have here the projections of what B2B content marketers are expecting to spend, or B2B marketers are expecting to spend on content marketing. Uh, the majority are planning on content marketing to increase. Here we have uh, over 58%, or about 58% are increasing content marketing spending, with 10% significantly increasing content marketing spend, uh, while only a third are remaining the same, and only 1%, only 1% are expecting to decrease content marketing spend. And then we have a trend over here. The percent of B2B marketing budget spent on content marketing, as you can see here, it was pretty much plateauing at 20, uh, around 2010, 2011 at about 26%. We saw a huge uh, shift upward in 2012 to 33%, and then it leveled back down a little bit in 2013 
Now, this is probably because there are some uh, front-end costs associated with starting a content marketing program, uh, adopting certain technologies, getting the right personnel in place. So it's not that much of a surprise that the costs associated would go down uh, over time to some extent. So that, uh, that move from 2012 to 2013 is not unexpected. And then here you can see social media and video adoption by B2Bs. Uh, this is where we've seen some of the most uh, highest increase in adoption. As you can see in 2010, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook were all roughly around the same. About half of B2B marketers were using uh, those different social networks. That has now dramatically increased with LinkedIn actually hitting about 93% and Twitter uh, pretty close behind it at about 85%. Uh, YouTube, which is the main uh, video sharing website, that had uh, a little bit of adoption in 2010 with over a third of B2B marketers using YouTube. We have now since seen that uh, rise to nearly three quarters using YouTube to share video content. And then the newest, one of the newest social networks uh, on the scene is Google+. We don't even have statistics on uh, the use of that in 2010. Uh, it was relatively unused in 2011 and in only two years has surpassed the 50% mark with over half of B2B marketers incorporating Google Plus into their content marketing toolbox. So in addition to the fact that a lot of B2B marketers, including those in the legal industry, are uh, incorporating content marketing into their marketing initiatives, Audiences are using this content. They are engaging with it through social media. They are reading it. As you can see here, social, net social networking site use by age group. This is from 2005 to 2013. Uh, we can see that that sweet spot for law firms uh, marked by that green line and also the blue line, the 30 to 49 year old age bracket and 50 to 64 year old age bracket, both of which uh, represent a lot of the um, personnel who would be the purchasers of outside legal services, uh, that has increased dramatically from relatively almost 0% adoption in 2005 when social networking was relatively new. Uh, now it's very commonplace with 78% amongst the 30 to 49 year old crowd and 60% amongst the 50 to 64 year old crowd. Uh, furthermore, not shown on this chart is a study conducted by Green Target and Inside Council Magazine that specifically talks about uh, in-house counsel's adoption of social media, and that showed that about two-thirds of in-house attorneys, uh, according to the study, use LinkedIn for professional purposes. So they fall right in line here with the general statistics. Now, uh, this speaks to video sharing adoption uh, over the past few years. In 2006, we saw about a third of people interacting and engaging with video sharing sites, such as YouTube. Uh, that has dramatically increased, too, uh, although it's plateaued a bit, but almost three quarters of the general population are using sites like YouTube. Uh, more specifically to the legal market, we have information from the uh, aforementioned study that says that more than half of in-house counsel access law firm websites and law firm YouTube channels for video content. And what's important about that is that's specifically law firm video content, whether it's from law firm sites or YouTube channels, not just general video content. That's more than half. And then how are these people actually digesting this information? Not just through what means on the internet, but through what actual hardware mechanisms, because that does uh, influence uh, the way that people interact uh, and engage with your content. So as we can see here, smartphone usage, according to this study, uh, has risen pretty dramatically in the short period of time that, that smartphones have been tracked. Uh, from about a third uh, of adults owning smartphones in 2011 to more than half in 2013. Uh, there's also statistics not represented on here that speak to the adoption of tablet computers. It was at 8% in 2011. It has now exceeded a third of adults in 2013. But uh, more specifically to the legal industry, in-house counsel fall actually right in line with these general population statistics. Uh, they are accessing information on smartphones uh, at a rate of about 53% of their population. And then as far as on tablets, 39%. Uh, so there has been a dramatic increase in use of mobile devices to access information and content. 
So it's obviously content's important. Uh, B2Bs are doing it. Uh, people are reading it and engaging with it, including in-house counsel. How do you actually go about creating high-quality content? Well, the first thing is you have to know your audience. Who are you trying to target? Are you trying to target other lawyers as referral sources or executives at, at uh, key corporations, perhaps the media? And what exactly are they interested in? Are they interested in legal developments, best practices? Then how do they how do they actually acquire their information? How do they digest this information? Do they use social media to get most of their updates or maybe e-newsletters? Are they accessing this content on smartphone and tablet devices? Once you have an understanding of your audience, you can begin to create a strategy. What are your goals? Are you trying to grow your business, acquire new clients? Are you just trying to create awareness within the marketplace or position yourself strategically? You're also going to want to create some sort of metrics to track your goals, these key performance indicators or KPIs. These can be things like unique visitors to your website or open rates or click-through rates on an e-newsletter. And once you have uh, the, the general overview of your strategy down, you can sort of start to narrow in on the specific messages you want to broadcast. So maybe you just had a big victory that you want to share, or you want an award, or you're moving offices. These are specific kind of messages that are typical of law firms. And then you have to decide the media in which you want to convey this message. And I say media because oftentimes it is a mix of several mechanisms. Perhaps it's video combined with a text-based case study, or perhaps it's a blog post that has an infographic uh, inserted into it. Uh, the point is that you want to select the optimal um, medium to convey the message to the right audience. And so when you actually have the idea for the uh, message that you want to convey, you have the media that selected for the way you want to broadcast that information, how do you actually then turn this into something that people want to engage with and read? Well, the way you do that is you use the power of storytelling. Uh, studies have shown that the narrative arc uh, or basically uh, storytelling, is the best way that we can share our thoughts, experience, and emotions with each other. It's how we best retain information. It's what helps incite people to act once they actually digest that information. As I call it, it's Wi-Fi of the mind. So let's see this process in action. Couch this in a uh, hypothetical example here. So what is your message? Well, let's say it's you had a big victory. You won a big case. Well, now we need to identify the audience. Who do you want to broadcast that to? Well, say clients and prospects. And what's the goal? Well, brand positioning. You want your clients and prospects to know that you are uh, successful on behalf of your clients, and you want that to hopefully encourage new business. And then what medium do you want to use to convey this message? Well, uh, as we've seen based on these statistics, that in-house counsel uh, rely heavily on law firm videos. So how about we convey this message through a video because it's a very engaging medium in which to tell a story. Uh, but we also want to include a text-based case study. Uh, that can be very important for a number of reasons, uh, such as search engine optimization and also uh, technical load times in case people don't have uh, uh, good Wi-Fi connections to, um, to watch a video. They can at least read the text, which will download much quicker. So when you're crafting the story of this hypothetical, I think it's important to identify who the characters are in the story. It's, you know, the firm and the attorneys involved in the case, the client and the client's personnel, as well as the adversary. Establish the context. What are the facts of the case? We need to set the stage so that the audience understands what's going on. What's the conflict? Uh, in any good story, if you remember the narrative arc from your probably high school English days, uh, the conflict is the, the why, it's the engine of every good story. So what was the basis of the matter? What was the basis of the conflict? That's going to be the thing that's really going to, uh, really going to attract your audience into the story that you're telling. What were the motivations of the different characters? Why did this case matter to the client? Why did it matter to the firm? It's important to broadcast what the stakes were. And then of course, what's the resolution? What steps did the parties take to resolve the conflict? and how did the conflict eventually get resolved, and how was the case transformative for the client, the firm, the adversary, and perhaps for the industry or business community at large, particularly if it sets some sort of a precedent. So 
now that you know a little bit about why content is important and how to create quality content, let's talk about how to actually then engage your clients and prospects in dialogue through this content because, as I said earlier, community is really content plus engagement. So engagement is that critical component. You can't just have uh, a one-way stream of information. It really does need to be a two-way street. And there's a lot of ways to do this. These are just three ways that I recommend. One is to enable and encourage comments. So if you have a blog, perhaps, a, a blog associated with your law firm or an attorney, you're going to want to enable comments on that blog so that people can interact. And you want to monitor the comment section so that if someone does leave a comment, you're going to be able to go in uh, pretty quickly and, and leave a response and hopefully create some sort of a dialogue, which is a great relationship building tool. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you want to have call to action copy, as I call it, at the end of a blog post, uh, perhaps in the um, description section of the YouTube video if you're, if you're posting onto YouTube. Uh, and call to action copy, what that really is, it's direct address to your audience that encourages them to take action of some sort. So for example, you see this often with a lot of blog posts, they'll say something like, uh, do you have thoughts on topic XYZ? If so, feel free to leave a comment below. So of course, social media is a very powerful engagement and interaction tool. Uh, here is a copy of my Twitter feed uh, that that actually shows the different interactions I've had uh, recently. Um, as you can see here, Twitter, you can do things such as retweets, which you'll see, uh, you can see down where it says RT, that's people who have uh, seen content that I have produced and have tweeted out to their followers. I do that as well, retweeting other people's content. Uh, and, and the great thing about that is when something is, is shared, it alerts the person that you shared that content, which then can help uh, hone that relationship. Uh, there's also um, things like tweet ats, uh, as you can see where it says, you know, at Keith Ecker. Uh, that's people who have engaged with me directly on Twitter. You can do that back at people and create a, a public-facing dialogue um, that can be a very uh, helpful engagement tool. LinkedIn also has some of these capabilities as well. Not quite as dynamic as Twitter is, but still, as far as professional networks go, it's a very good professional network, the most heavily relied upon for those who uh, in the legal marketplace. Uh, it operates very much like Facebook, if you're familiar with that. Uh, you can post articles, as you see here. You can like articles, leave comments, uh, comment on other people's articles. And oftentimes, the more you engage with people on LinkedIn by leaving comments and liking their content, the more they're going to engage back which means, once again, your, your relationship building. And then you can be creative. You know, you can think outside of the box. You have to remember there's a tremendous amount of content being produced all the time as content marketing has really kind of come into its own uh, and matured. Uh, B2B marketers, as I said earlier, over 90% are now using content marketing. So you need to find ways that are going to break, uh, break you out of the pack. And this is one approach, one of many that you can use. It's crowdsourcing content. Uh, crowdsourcing content is when you rely on your audience to generate content for you. Um, might seem somewhat unorthodox, but frankly speaking, we have done this for our own clients, and we have seen uh, really great success with it. It does lead to awareness. Uh, it leads to communication and trust uh, and interaction, uh, which then, of course, can lead to new business. So some specific examples are things like promotions and contests, caption contests, which I have here uh, representative as an example is uh, the New York Times caption contest. But if you can find creative means in which to engage your audience uh, to create a back and forth dialogue through the internet, that's going to really help with relationship building, that's going to really help with building trust, and that's going to really help with creating new business. So what are some of the key takeaways we have here? Well, why content? Why do we keep talking about content? It's because content plus engagement it equals community. And through community is how we build awareness. It is how we generate communication. It's how we build trust. And that all leads to new business. How do you go about creating this high quality content? Well, first and foremost, you have to know your audience. Who are you speaking to? Then create a strategy and then create key performance indicators and means to actually track that strategy and its success. Decide on the specific message and the media in which you want to convey that message and make sure that when you actually do 
convey that message, it takes the form of a story, something that's really going to engage and stick with your audience. And how do you engage your audience? Well, you're going to want to enable and encourage comments on blogs and YouTube channels, and if your website has that capacity on your website, you're going to want to interact and, and track on social media very regularly. And you're going to find creative avenues as well to break out of the mold uh, so that your content um, gets seen. So crowdsourcing content, for example, is one of those ways to do that. So thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your time today. I'm Keith Becker with Kathy PR. Take care.